Hello, hello. You're back. <laughs> For now, we'll see. <laughs> I have, what do you, what do you want to go by? You want to go by Raccoon City? I think that's what we had you as last time you yeah, were here, right? Like the IG handle, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can, I'll let you introduce yourself. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm Noodles or Dave of Raccoon City Comics. Uh, yeah. Go. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. If you don't speak Spanish, Mapacha means raccoon, guys. This yeah. is. Spanish oh, yeah. Today. Okay. Yeah, he's right there too, like on the hat. I okay, love that. Makes more sense. And then, of course, everybody knows Pablo, and um, I'm Juke. Um, we are back. I think we're going to talk about. Um, oh, we want to talk about the Nuki tape first because everybody in the tape collected community has asked me about it and is freaking out about it. So we'll probably touch on that. And then I think we're going to look at the certified link auction. But before we get into all that, let me run our intro. <laughs> i feel like i'm stammering around all awkward here because i haven't done this in so long we've been like all the holidays and stuff and then i was sick forever like hacking up a lung and i'm like I'm, there's no way i can do a podcast like literally hacking up a lung so we are back hopefully on a regular basis <laughs> you here, guys happy 2023 2023 all right, so let me pull this up here. I can remember how to do that. I'm white. I'm too white. You're too white, Paulo? <laughs> it's white. It's the whiteness in that face. All right, so. Um, how are you the is. whitest when you're in California? That's true. Uh, I'm in the snow right now. Sunshine, man. It's been all rainy here for, for two weeks. So everyone is talking about the Nuki tape for obvious reasons. If you haven't seen this, um, it is a graded copy of the movie Nuki, and it was put up on auction for charity on eBay from Red Letter Media, and it went for over $80,000. So everyone is freaking out, right? Which is super funny. Um, I guess the only thing I have to say about it is that you cannot take a joke too far for me. Like, I fucking love jokes that just go way too far. And I feel like that's what this is. Like, this was a joke that just went super far. Um, so I love it for that. As far as the movie goes, I have absolutely no idea. From what I understand, it's a terrible movie. And that part of the joke is that they don't like the movie. And so, that you know, that's part of it or whatever. But um, it's already affecting other prices apparently uh a lot, of here's people, a lot of money right so i don't know I'm, I'm hoping that people don't just immediately see it and they're like start buying these tapes or whatever because clearly um that one only sold for that amount because it was a running joke of red letter media's channel which i don't know anything about um how does that affect the charities well he's donating the money to charity but what if it's a joke and he doesn't get any money for it um, well, I mean, I guess there's always a chance that the person could cancel it or not pay for it, but, um, I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait for him to update people to let them know if they actually paid or not. Yeah. I mean, they, they say that they're going to donate it to St. Jude hospital. So, uh, and then another charity, but if St. Jude somehow they post it on the, on their Instagram, then that will be real. Yeah, 50% of the sale. And then I think they said the other 50% was going to go to an animal shelter or something. Yeah, the Wisconsin Humane Society. They are, they are located in Wisconsin, I think. So someplace in Wisconsin. So, I mean, I love that. And again, if if the guy that won pays, great. Um, it will be awesome. But it's definitely, that's a bad movie from the 80s. And again, it's... Uh, Definitely not worth eighty thousand dollars for sure. Maybe Dave's hat, the raccoon hat, is worth worth more than that, but not. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So it says here in the description that he like puts that um, one of the worst films ever made. Unlike other graded Hollywood classics, this movie should be sealed in in a case never to be viewed. Um, so if you want to, if you want to find the video, he said that they they featured it in the video. We finally watched Nuki, the VHS grading video, and apparently they had a bunch of other copies of them. They put through a wood chipper. But as far as I understand, that the guy who's behind this whole thing um, doesn't like sealed tapes. Is like totally not into it. Um, not his thing, which was part of this whole joke. 
but yeah, so that is the Nuki thing explained. Um, do you have anything you want to add, Pablo? No, to me, again, this is this is uh, very interesting because, again, in the, uh, let's say Heritage or Certified Link or Comic Connect, uh, they go with another Nuki graded. It will be interesting to see. Yeah. Therefore, they are going to think uh, it will hit $1,000, in my opinion. Like, if you want to make a prediction, just because of that in the news, people just be kind of, like, curious about it. Right. Is this is, a, like, one edition is, of it? I, I think so. I think there's only one print of it. I yeah, don't think there's seven, that's the only one, but it's again, these are not as rare as you might think. There's a lot of those, like Robocops 87s, right. a lot, Lethal Weapon 87s, a lot. So, this one, Nuki, there should be plenty of those as well. Sealed, yeah, it's yeah, pretty evidence funny, by the ones that have shown up since, like on eBay alone, like yeah, you know, like yeah, 24 hours after, yeah, yeah, they're cashing in. I mean, those you're never gonna. I mean, that was like a 20 on tape open all day. It's so funny. I love it. I love the joke. This is just like when, um, you know, news stations and stuff talked about the Back of the Future tape that Heritage Auction sold that was from the collection of, what's his name, the guy who played Biff? You know, people, they take the number and the tape and they run it on like the news and they post Facebook articles and all this shit. But the reality is another Back of the Future, even if it was the same print, is not going to sell for that price because it, it didn't belong. It didn't belong to the guy who played Biff. So it's like you got to take all that context in. Definitely, don't just take a number or an article and be like, "That is what this is worth." Yeah, that's a good point, Maya. I think, although the power for Sylvia Chess is going to be uh, behind a lot of the actors and, and directors, like it, Quentin Tarantino, he owns basically a whole video store in his in his house, you know, and that's just Quentin Tarantino. He used to work at a video store, then that video store went out of business, and he bought the whole thing. So imagine if that pops, those belong to Quentin Tarantino, even if they're open. Just the, you know, just the provenance, just to say the Quentin Tarantino collection, and those those will come one day in the future. That's going to be something to see. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what it was, but not too long ago, the John Carpenter's instagram like his official instagram ran some kind of auction that were like john carpenter's personal tapes and they sent out these boxes to the people who won the auctions of tapes from his collection Paper and paperbacks I, I actually know someone in one of the groups they won one of the halloween ones Paper like from, yeah from his collection john carpenter like signed by him it's what huh? you're talking about there like that it was like a giveaway or something like that and that was in his collection yeah, John Carpenter. I mean, he's still alive, so he might have more stuff for all we know, and he might sign more stuff in uh, horror conventions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's pretty good about going. He goes to a lot of conventions. They didn't even have him on the, the, uh, I don't know, celebrity list or the roster or whatever for um, Steel City in Pittsburgh. But then I saw that they had posted pictures of him. So like, even if I guess I don't even know if he was scheduled to be there, but he was there. So that's pretty cool. But he gets around. Yeah, I think that that's gonna be one of the things to see with VHS, like sign copies, seal or open. You know, from the actors from Scream, the actors from Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, Robert Englund still around. Mm -hmm. Tarantino, you know, Carpenter, uh, Joe Dante still around. You know, John Landis, a lot of great directors that can sign those big horror copies. It's so funny too. I. Uh... I was just watching a movie with my niece before we hopped on here to do this, and we were watching The Brave Little Toaster. Um, oh. which I don't remember who it was on this show one time that was talking about getting a sealed copy of Brave Little Toaster and being all excited, but I, I watched the movie with her. We didn't even make it through the whole movie because she was like, nah, I'm not having this. Like, I don't even know what's going on. Like, this is a terrible movie. I was like, all right, kids. So we gave up on it. But there's these dancing computers, and, like, they don't look like computers at all, like terrible drawings. But like she's never seen, she's like seven, so she's never seen a computer like from the nineties, like the big square monitors with the, you know, like they're so thick and they got the big tower. She has no idea what that is. So we were laughing about it, me and her dad, because we're like, "What is that supposed to be?" And she's like, "Oh, I think it's a DVD player because it has a disc in it. Like <laughs> it's got like a floppy disc sticking out of it." <laughs> oh, floppy! So, I mean, it feels she, right. she's like, "Maybe it's a DVD player." It's so funny because we're like, "Yeah, no, it didn't even exist then," but. Like, oh, I can't wait to turn her into uh, a dead media junkie. 
right? Like, introduce all the retro like stuff from that era, like because it. it me and Pablo were actually just talking about like that, like the the gap there, that like how it splits, you know, like for generations, like the ones that caught the VHS, you know, and the ones that didn't. Yeah, like you. I mean, you are millennial. Maya is Generation Z, and I'm mm -hmm. no. I'm like I'm the last year of millennial. No, come on. Yep, the very last year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the last year of millennial. I love it. Yeah, it's it's what they call us um, zillennials because we're like millennials technically, but we're the we're like the last years of it, so we connect more with like stuff in the early two thousands, even though we were born in the mid nineties. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about, like that, like the little, like it's such a short period of time though, but if you just missed it by like four years even or something, like it's just that quick, yep. like the jump in technology and just everything. So let me ask you, Maya, like like for girlfriends and uh, uh, and friends around your age, besides the, obviously the, the, the usual suspect, the guys that you already know from Instagram, do, do they talk about, you know, analog stuff like Betamax, VHS, or when you say it, like you just don't, you don't, they don't know what you're talking about. So a lot of people are my age are into the retro video games for sure. Um, they love the old video games, Nintendo, Sega's, all that. And they like uh, vinyl records is a big thing among people my age. And uh, recently, a lot of people have started collecting um, cassettes, like uh, music cassettes. So that's become a thing. Um, but as far as... Uh, <laughs> As far as VHS goes, I think I'm the only one so far. Although it's spreading because, like, the my best friend who she she doesn't know anything about VHS, right? Like, we had them when we were kids, but she I hated the way she did it too because when she would get VHS, she would take the cover off and throw them away and just keep the tape. Like I'm well, like, I what the? Fuck? It's so uh, weird. Like, why did you do that? But thing. now she's getting a collection of them because I keep finding tapes that remind me of her and giving them to her. So it's like she's amassing a collection now. Call her the mutilator. Yeah, the mutilator. It's pretty good. <laughs> so what do you got? This is certified link. This is a really good uh, auction site. I mean, it's not on the level of heritage, but it's pretty strong. Yeah, so I wanted to say, first off, if you go to their website to look at this. Um, a little jab right there without like, being a little jab right there. <laughs> and you go to their auctions, the winter auction, right? Um, if you scroll down to the VHS Betamax tapes and you click on it, it doesn't want to load at all, right? But if you click on it on the left side over here, it brings it all up. So I don't know if that's like a glitch in their website or something, but just if you have issues going through it that way, if you just try to get to it through the side panel here, it'll bring it all up. So. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know they have Betamax. Nice, Maya. Yeah, when you sent me the link on my phone and I tried to open it that way, I was like, nothing will load, but then I got it to work this way. So, um, yeah, so they've got, what here, 19 tapes, you said? I think so, something like that. 19, 20, 11. Oh, that's your tape right there, Dave. Fight yeah, Club. Yeah, what should this Fight Club go for? Well, this is just so like beginning. 24. You okay. got the stuff, too? The yeah, stuff. they got the stuff. So they have the Nightmare on Elm Street 2, which is only a 7.5, but we'll see where it goes. This Animal House is super cool. It's a Betamax, and it has the um, full wrap MCA. Release? Oh, yeah, that's the first release. Oh, that's, yeah, that's cool. cool. Yep, full wrap. That's, so this is a pretty good one. That's going to be like three grand, maybe. Mm -hmm. VGA? In my opinion. Well, this one is, at least. It's in really good shape, too. Is this 1980? It's pretty crispy. 83. 82? 83, yeah. Mm -hmm. How much yeah. is this yeah. at? That's gonna These go just started 24 hours ago, and it is only at six bucks. All right. I'll buy so it. So got... 34 days it it ends on uh february 10th and then i think i think heritage is start starts on january 30th and theirs ends on the 17th so we're gonna have like the end of this auction to talk about and then immediately the next week have the heritage one to talk about so it's gonna be fun yeah absolutely let's see what else here we have beverly hills call is that, that should be a pretty good one if it's the first oh yeah that's the first release mm -hmm. I've never heard of Blood Lake. That one is, is actually uh, I think it's shot on video. That's that's a that's a good movie. We go I've never heard of this. I mean it's not when you say it's a good movie, you have to 
be more accurate to the, the, the group people. Yeah, it's not a good <laughs> movie by any means. <laughs> it's good, but yeah, you're right, Dave. That's what I should have said. It's, it's so good. bad, it's good. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. This, this, oh, you don't like it? I don't really like a lot of them. I know it's like blasphemous, to, yeah. but I'm I mean, usually again, it's um, uh, it goes for a lot open. I mean, it's at least $150 open. So this one should be at least 500 still, in my opinion. Hmm, okay, child's play. Oh, I love that movie. This is the one that gets me though. This is this is not, sorry, but not the one you want. No. No, this is Video Treasures. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, and especially Day of the Dead, it's always easy to spot, too, because not only, I mean, Video Treasures marks it clearly right on the front, but on the original media, his face is on the other side. It's uh, like it's flipped. Hmm. You know what I mean? It's flipped the wrong way. Very good, Maya. So for the viewers, guys, do not, something new every day. do not bid mm -hmm. on this. This should be, it's not even the price of the grading service. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's really not. Bucks. Let me see if I can find it here. Um, Who is the top dog? Uh, you know the guy on Comic Link, uh, Dave? Is it? Uh, I don't know the name of the guy. Do you know Ooh. the top guy in, in Comic Link, Dave? No, no. I never really dealt with Comic Link. I've been on stuff once in a while, to, you know, comics and stuff. But do you ever send any any stuff to them? To or always you send them to Heritage? Always Heritage. <laughs> Yeah, so it looks like someone <laughs> bought one of these on October 28th for 350 bucks, which again, like, this is just not the one you want. And this even, one. like, someone sold, well, this one's a screener, so maybe, is this one a screener? Is that why? No, no, it isn't. No, it can't yeah. be, not if it's, like, video treasures. So. Yeah, video, you never buy any with video treasures. That's num rule number one. Do not touch any copies when you see video treasures. That's I mean, even open, even open, though, you don't touch those, like, the people hate Yeah, so, so there oh. is a version like this of video treasures that's a promo screener, but instead of having a barcode, it says promo screener on it. So I have no idea why. Um, still, this... that one, even whoever paid 300 again. I, I don't get why they would even have a screener, though, for, like, video treasures. Like it's No idea. Yeah, you're right. No idea. But the, um, yeah, let's see. One sold on October 28th, and it was also a promo. The Video Treasures promo went for like 350 and a graded copy of it went for like 150 a couple days before. Um, so other than that, you're going to be looking for, let's see, this one that isn't sealed, obviously, but just so you can see the picture of it. Um, has media, but see how the face is facing the other direction? Yeah. That's what you want. You nice. don't want this one. Nice. Yep. So anyway, just a note on that. Yeah, I see they have a Halloween also if you want to highlight that. That Halloween too is not the first release. Either. Yeah. Okay, so current bid is 40 bucks. I already wouldn't pay that for this. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, this one. <laughs> Stay away from that one. And then this Star Wars, I think... Um, is there an earlier print than this one? I know that they always tell me there's something about the... Digital yeah, master down here in the bottom. Much, uh, the digital uh, thing, if, if that's out, I think that will be much better than that. But still not bad. The Star Wars, I think, are always going to hold value. Yeah, those are going to be like whole quantity ones for comics. or right. There's going to be a lot of demand. So the fans are going are gonna to buy these. Yeah, anything that still has white watermarks on it, I would say is good to buy with with Star Wars. Definitely not the 90s stuff, though. That's like the only time when people ask me about Star Wars tapes. I'm like, basically, I, I would say, depending on the price, you know, I'll, that makes a huge difference. But um, just avoid the, the 90s shit. You know what I mean? If it's in the 80s, it's not a, I wouldn't say it's a bad buy if you can get it for a good price. But oh, yeah. Is this the one you were talking about? Yeah, that again, because that could be tricky for, for guys that they, they don't really know. But the original Halloween also has that MCA. It also says stereo in the stereo. Front. Yeah, which this is also, yeah, uh, I mean, IGS. I don't like that they put that because at the top it says first print of 1987. Yeah, that's weird because Halloween 2 came in 1981. So that's a bad writing on that label. Right. Yeah, have, but it actually, the first release also says stereo, but it says like vertical or, or like. Uh, yeah, but it, and the first one's a rainbow. Yeah, it's a rainbow. That's yeah, that the first. Yeah, rainbow one, it's like. confusing, Dave, because a lot of guys they just memorize. Oh, if it says if it if it says MCA and it says stereo, that's the first Halloween two, and it's not. 
Like it, it has to be that rainbow and it has to be in diagonal. Uh, right, this right, one's right, just right. superior, but it's 87 and that's that one, right? So there, again, yeah. this one's obviously open, but if you see how it has the uh, stereo bar, which I think the first print of The Thing also has the stereo yeah, bar. Yeah, it definitely does. So a lot of early MCAs, you should look out for that because that's that. Those are two. Like the fun the rip that I know. Of. Fun yeah. house as well. Yeah. Okay. But again, for, for guys, the viewers, you see that that could be a little bit misleading. You know, like uh, IGS. That's that's not the right wording. Why are you saying the first release of '87? It's it's just not the first release of the movie. Right, right. Yeah, I definitely do not like that wording. 1987 VHS movie makes it sound like that's the year that it came out. And then first print of 1987. I mean, for uh, the, the wording definitely tries to make it out like it's a first print, but it's absolutely not. Yeah, and it looks like the box is, is, is kind of similar for the guy that doesn't know much. Like, I don't know much about paperbacks, for example. Like, they right. know more, more, much more. Um, they look similar, but it's just not the same thing. And then the, the price, it should be tremendously different i mean if you get that rainbow that should be thousands yeah this that's one, really what you just have to look for though on those you know for first releasing like for universal stuff it's just like the just the mca rainbows like regardless like of genre all of that right guys and and um when they say mca rainbows um instead of the mca being this like rectangular block shape it's the one that is a rainbow shape so whenever we like are referring to rainbow that's what we're talking about um, and it's also pretty safe bet that, you know, if it's an early MCA, that the watermarks, I'd say wraparounds are the best. Um, and not all of them have it, but, you know, the earlier ones, wraparounds are the best and you want the rainbow watermarks. But um, even like with this animal house that we just looked at, it's wraparounds, but it's still the s square rectangular ones. Yeah. So it's like the rectangular ones aren't bad. It's just the rainbows are better. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, wraparounds, definitely best. Definitely best. It just gets tricky because you have to figure out like what year did this movie come out and when did they stop doing that? Which if we had Charles here, he could tell you right offhand, but I don't remember exactly what year it was. They stopped doing it. But the, see, the, now that's why like the grading thing, like the, the, that should be very specific and cut and dry, like in a label, like that shouldn't be over, you know, complicated like the way it is even now like right. overworded and all of this it should be stripped out the cgc labels are. yeah absolutely yeah very good they I, I hope cgc when when they start grading that they they learn the mistakes from igs uh in this case like you, you don't i mean you, that's the whole point of it is to educate the people that's why they're paying for it to get fucking graded is like right you know, yeah, how hard is it to tell you that this is not the first release, or it is like or second or third or whatever it is? But it's it's a lot of information. It's like, like comic books. You know, when you look Overstreet, Overstreet is a very thick book, man. So VHS is, is as thick right now with the amount of releases out there. So mm -hmm. it will take time to get this to the public, but we are we are there. We're trying to help them at least on the mainstream movies like Halloween. You, you cannot make these mistakes. Right, right. I mean, and that's good advice, too. I mean, there's a lot of people in this community that put out information and, you know, we do this show. And we were, I was just on um, Burgundy's show the other day with Danny and Pablo. I mean, those guys are in the tape game. There's a lot of people around. So I'd say before you make any massive purchase, uh, especially through an auction site, because I mean, I get in every instance, like if you're bidding on something on eBay, you might not want to send it to someone and ask them because then you're giving away the thing you're trying to buy. But in these auctions, it's like everyone's already looking at them anyway. So if you're considering making a big purchase, like maybe just talk to someone about it and make sure you know what you're getting. Because um, even the labels can be misleading. Yeah, that's a good point, Maya. Yeah. So this one, um, I just wanted to see because I've never seen a fight club that doesn't have these blue reels of death, which everyone hates these. I don't I, I really don't care at all about the blue reels. They don't bother me, but lots of people hate them. But I don't think that there's any other watermarks for fight club than this. Yeah, I think that's the only watermarks, the blue reels. And what does that mean? Do you know, Maya? I have no idea what it means. I've heard so many different theories about it. The only thing I know is that if it's an older movie, um, you know, like CBS Fox, obviously these are 20th Century Fox because it's a later film. But the older movies, the CBS Foxes and stuff, you want the white watermarks that say CBS Fox. And even sometimes they have blue ones later on. Uh, but if you find a movie that's like CBS Fox and it has these reels on it or something, it's definitely a re-release. 
like 100% will give it away because the original CBS Fox ones did not have reels. This, the only time you want to buy a tape that has reels on it is if it's something that was released in the late 90s like this movie. Yeah, as far as I'm, con as far as I'm concerned, the, the best uh, explanation is that they are resealed. They're still new. They, they just repackage them. And it's and the runoff stock from like the studios in the end days that didn't like they don't know what to do with that. So to contract it out to like, you know, blockbusters or whatever like that, that's what that is like. Right. Stamping it like that. Don. Yeah. But again, like Maya was saying earlier, like stay away from 90s movies, except for Fight Club. Right. Maybe like Fight Club and Pulp Fiction. Mean yeah, Girls. There's a handful. I got. I like the Matrix. Mean I, Girls. Yeah. Oh, Matrix. Yeah, the Matrix. I like Point Break. I like Fight Club. Oh, ba Batman. Uh, what's the other one? Domino. Domino. But that's 2000s, Dave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But that those are tough like movies. I mean, those are even tough open like Domino. Oh, right. like, oh, no. like, oh no, I'm just saying like, the late 2005. Those are rare. Just saying, any movies from 1990 to 1999. Right. Just very few. Yep. That you can go for it, unless it's like a screener or a promo tape, and even then, you have to be careful. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna argue that with you and tell you that people should just buy whatever they want. No, like, and I agree. Like, like <laughs> they, you know what I mean? Like, like what their favorite shit is. Like they should collect what they want and not like just you know let other people dictate it or markets dictate it. Like, for what, sure, for sure, though. I agree with you, Dave. There, like, I'm just saying, do not pay too much money yeah you don't want to pay a ton for it because there's you could probably find them you know what i mean like if somebody's asking five grand for it on ebay if you really want to find it i bet you could find them because they were just mass produced but i actually have a lot of i have quite a few sealed tapes that were from the late 90s even some early 2000s because they're stuff that i like like rocco's modern life and samurai jack and stuff like it was stuff i grew up with so i wanted it you know what i mean and I'm like, maybe, maybe it'll be worth something someday. I've seen that, you know, uh, Good Burger, that Nickelodeon movie, it goes pretty high sometimes, yeah. even just as an open tape. So I'm like, maybe they'll go somewhere, maybe they won't, but I love them, so I'm going to buy them anyway. Yeah. No, it's good. yeah. That's a great attitude, though, for any collectible. Yeah. But I agree with you, Dave. Buy what you want, buy what you like, whatever, you know, floats your boat. You know, that's fine. It's just don't overpay. Like it happened to me. You know, I thought Pulp Fiction was rare. And there's just a lot of those sealed. The first releases, I'm not even talking about the collector's edition, which is you should even go there. But the original releases, there is a lot of those. Mm -hmm. But see, that's the cool part with VHS or anything that's fresh and new with these collectible things that are emerging is the fact that like you do make mistakes and it's a learning process or a learning curve for some and others it's uphill, you know, but that's the fun of collecting it is that you learn and you make these fucking mistakes and you spend your money and you do it, but that's how you learn. And that's why you spiral in and it's like an addiction or whatever for any collectible. Oh like, yeah, for sure. Get, like, I feel like anytime that I make a fuck up, I, it just makes me want to like prove myself. And I'm like, I got to do something even better to make up for this. Like yeah, I, yeah. I definitely have found tapes. I just went through like three huge totes of different sealed stuff because the beginning, I just kept everything sealed that I found. And like when I would go to thrift stores, I would just buy them because I didn't want to pass something up. And you know what I mean? If you can find them cheap enough, who cares? So I was like picking up these tapes, 50 cents a buck, like not knowing what they were. And then I had all these totes and I start going through them. I'm like, this is a reseal. This is a reseal. This is a reseal. Like, how did I not know this in the beginning? But thankfully I didn't pay very much for them because I was just scouring everywhere. But like it wouldn't yeah. be fun if, you, if it was just like handed to you. Right. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like if you just, if everything was just easy like that and there was no fun of like hunting it or learning it or discovering new things about it, you know, like then what would be the point of it even? So Maya, what will be some of the places that real quick, like like you will go hunting, like if people the, for the viewer, where where should they go, wherever they live in the state that they are, East Coast or West Coast or the Midwest or? Oh, there is a good one. That one will probably be the highest one of that auction. Okay, so I would say that, you know, when we talk about this on the show and I ask this question to people all the time and people get really funny about when you ask them about this. So first of all, there's that warning. Uh, if you ask people, some people might be really shitty about it. But I have found that if you want to find things off eBay, um, which I do because I cannot compete with the mass market of eBay. And I don't know how Carter does it where he like finds shit as soon as it hits and gets it for a price and they actually ship that stuff to him. Carter, you're a machine. 
he is machine. I don't know how he fucking does it. I feel like even if I managed to find a deal like that, that the person would get an offer from somebody else and they would cancel it. You no, know, they just you know, did like, it to me the other day on a paper. I just told this dude not to me. Like they did that. They fucked me out of like twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah backdoor you on know, something. Order, like. So I stay away from eBay most of the time. And I look at like, I don't know, yard sales and estate sales are good. People got like estate sales and you can go through the house or whatever because people aren't looking for them. Flea markets are always good. Flea market season is awesome, um, especially for open tapes, too. I actually, when I was on my trip, I went to one of the Goodwill bins and found a, a first print copy of the thing there, obviously open. But it's like still I paid 25 cents for it and then turned around and sold it and make a profit on it. Like more, right? That's a hundred dollars at least. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. It was like twenty five quarter into a hundred bucks overnight, like no problem. Nice. It was nice. super nice. So Goodwill bins was fun. Um, I wish we had more of those in my location in my area, but like the nearest one's like an hour away. So it's not something that I get to frequently do. But Goodwills, I always check the Goodwills, which I know I know some places say that they don't sell tapes anymore, but I I always check them just to see. Nine times out of ten, it's a hundred copies of Apollo thirteen and Titanic, which sucks, but like what does it hurt to check? You know yeah. what I mean? I even started going to some local thrift stores and just giving people a car with my phone number on it. I'm like, if you find VHS of like this kind, call me and I will buy them. Like, you know what I mean? Passing it out. But I will say that uh, estate sales have got to be, I think, the best option. I've, I've just started messaging people on eBay who have sold some high dollar tapes. Like, I know this is already sold. I'm not trying to make you an offer. But I just wanted to ask you, where did you find this thing? Like, where did you find it? And several different times on some of these high, like one of them was a... Uh, the a wizard texas chainsaw master beta or something like that and i was like where did you find it and they told me they found them in estate sales especially of like uh two of them which was weird told me that it was a hoarder's house that had an estate sale after they passed away and they had all this stuff and tapes were one of them that were still sealed and i'm like oh yeah that makes total sense because they hoard stuff they never use it like so it's bizarre but the, i don't know I've, I've tried to get in contact with people in my area like I've done so much research, dude, like doing, going through property records and seeing because I'm like asking my mom, like, where was this video store? And she gives me the address. So then I'm going through the property records like and finding people's names and like trying to get a hold of them to call them. Like, do you still have this stuff? But I have not had any luck through that route. I only ended up getting a hold of one guy who still had the stuff who never contacted me back because he was an old guy and it was winter time. He's like, maybe in the summer. Never heard from him again. So I'm like. I don't know. I'd say, yeah, flea markets and different estate sales. Sometimes those back corner places that you would never, never think of, you know, nice. which is, I have hope for in West Virginia that I'll like find here. Like I know there's some, there's stuff here somewhere. I find old shit all the time. I went to a flea market or estate sale over the summer and found a fucking 1954 Philco TV that I can't shut up about since I found it. And I'm like, what are the chances Still that you're going to find this? It. It's still turned on. Like I'm freaking <laughs> out. And I paid twenty dollars for it, so I'm like, "Yeah, dude, yard sales, estate sales, especially flea markets. Like, go look for that shit." Yeah, for me, I, I mean, all those that you said, and then I will add, depends on wh where you live, Craigslist and OfferUp. You know, those are locally, of course. Like, if you're looking in Seattle, San Francisco, New York, LA, Chicago, Craigslist still strong in my opinion, and OfferUp. Those two are, are good to look for. For Betamax and, and VHS, for sure. Or just, like, on Heritage. Because, like, what it really is, like, what I've told Pablo before, like, in searching for VHS sealed, right? Like, in the time that's passed since me and him even met. It's, like, it it is rare. Like, that's the whole point why it was ever, you know, an option to be graded and why people saw that potential in it ever. And why it gets the values it does is because certain tapes are extremely rare sealed like that and for someone like myself or Pablo who actively hunt like that nationwide like full time just it, I never find it I like I find open tapes all the time of all genres you know like rare shit and just common bullshit but like, to find really rare sealed stuff especially the horror mystery like genres it's next to like impossible. You have way better luck finding any other collectible almost like at this point, except maybe like 1930s baseball cards and, like, you know, pre Robin text shit like that, dude. Other yeah. Than I that. think, uh, I, I mean, I've definitely found some sealed tapes that weren't worthless, but I think the most expensive one I found was a promo copy of judge dread that was still sealed. And I got it in like a big, uh, tote of tapes. And then, um, I think there was a cone heads in that too. Like the same guy, had that but um other places too like i got a copy of star wars while it is like a second print 
copy of Star Wars that's still sealed. I found the guy on Facebook who posted it in a group and was like, I don't know what this is. And of course, there's all these people like jumping on it, like giving him all this different information. So I messaged him. I'm like, here's what it is. Like, I'll, I'll be honest with you and tell you what it is. Here's what I'll pay you for it. And just for the fact that I was honest with the guy, he sold it to me for a really decent price. So I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, you can find Facebook and stuff, too. Facebook Marketplace is a good one as well. I found lots yeah, of tapes yeah, that way. but Mostly good. open, but Facebook Marketplace is a good one. Um, I've even gone so far as to put ads in my green tab and shit, like local newspaper, like looking for sealed tapes. Call me, text me a picture of it and see what it is. If it is, I'll give you, I'll pay you cash for it. You know what I mean? Like, why not? Yeah, going the extra mile, Maya. Oh, dude, I'm doing everything. I'm trying to find this shit. <laughs> so I'm going to call you Huntress. That's for sure. <laughs> For sure. I'm out here looking for it. Me and my brother, the craziest thing we, we've we done so far, there was this guy uh, tearing down a house behind his house. And he goes out there to help this guy, like helping him carry stuff just because he's like a nice dude. And the guy's like, yeah, you wouldn't believe some of the stuff I find in these abandoned houses. And my brother's like, oh, really? Well, if you ever find any VHS, let me know. So the guy basically gives us free reign and he gives us like a list of houses that he's tearing down in the neighborhood. And me and my brother just like get our handguns and we're like kicking in the doors of these abandoned houses, like looking for tapes, <laughs> which we did manage to find some. But unfortunately, um, most of them were just fucking destroyed. Like they were just ruined. But it was so funny. I'm like, I will go to great lengths looking for tapes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's the, the way to do it. But what you said, Dave, Dave is, is right. Like. Sometimes you will find that deal on Heritage. It's just because some 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 of the guys they're not gonna bid on that tape, but you get in a bargain. You know, like for, for example, certain things. I mean, that are super rare like that. It's like there really aren't that many. So like, if you actively wanted that tape, and like that is why it's commanding that price. Because how else are you gonna get it? Like, I mean, whether graded or just you know raw like that sealed. It's like I don't see these things out there, and like you don't see them out there when you're actively hunting it. And like, can you pull the, the the stuff, Maya, on that certified link? That's the point that I, that Dave makes. Like, go, look at the stuff. That's a movie from 1985. I know Dave had one of these earlier uh, last year. I think you had one of these, Dave, and you bought it on eBay for a decent price, and then you you sold it. I think that's a rare tape, man. Uh, Which one was it? The stuff. Oh, the stuff. Love Top Gun. A great movie. And I think these are rare, man. I, I think yeah, the stuff. I've never even seen an open copy of the stuff. So this, this is high grade too, which you know I don't know if IGS is lenient or not, but this is this is in my opinion is is not a common tape to find seal. No, and the other picture like I'm gonna make on the VHS why I fell in love with it originally was like the art, like on oh, all sure. the original like aspect of that that gets neglected in all this. Like that that's like a key selling point of that. Like, like, like look at the art of it. it it's like comparable to pre-codes and it's all original it's phenomenal work like and it's just super good and underrated yeah and these are anything from the 80s you know is done by hand it's definitely not computers it's done by computers it's done by hand so the artist is it's uh, also as a plus and and this is a fun movie uh, it's one of my favorites from the 80s yeah cult wise yeah but it, it definitely there is a lot of uh, hidden messages, you know, talking about American, you know, consumers, like they, they, they consume a lot of stuff. So it's kind of like a, like a parody or, or uh, talking about how Americans, they love to consume stuff. So it has a hidden message. You, if you, when you watch this a couple of times, especially you pick up things. Yeah, that director does that a lot. Like, uh, Larry Cohen, I think it is. Like, that, like almost all of his movies have that in there, that like political shit, like influence and stuff like views and oh he did it's alive too which is another sick cover i believe because it's like a old-fashioned baby carriage or something i had i was just telling him the cover art is what gets me we were talking last week i have so many tapes especially horror tapes tons of them that i haven't watched yet but i see them and i'm like that cover is so fucking sick so i buy it and then it's like yet to watch i have yet to watch it but it's coming I think there's a lot of people out there, like, really, for what it is. Like, that's the selling point. That's what I like, the nostalgia. Like, from what I hear from a lot of guys, I just remember myself even, like, just back in the day, is, like, in the video stores, that's what it was. It was just shelving that and, like, those ridiculous covers like that. And, like, even as, like, vulgar and, you know, like, violent as some of them even are, like, that was just open. 
like, you know, to the public, like on shelving every week in video stores. And mm -hmm. as kids, I think like, all of us saw it. And that's why we remember it even now. Yeah. yeah the other one that I see that is interesting is definitely the Top Gun. Like that's a promo tape that, that should go for a lot of money. Maybe the, this one is super cool. That's a great cover. Yeah, I've never seen that. This is a strange auction full of like it. I don't know. It's it's a weird mix. Um, like because this is a super rare tape. I mean, it's a it's the Diet Pepsi promo tape of Top Gun, um, with back watermarks. Whoa! I feel like uh, Pepsi Two is just like so <laughs> iconic of the eighties. Yeah. Um, so this but is a super good tape. Commercials even like the recorded shit on eBay. Of like Pepsi and all that, like you can't get those commercials anywhere else anymore. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, there's a couple Diet Pepsi ones. I know there's this one, and then there's Home Alone, and I think uh, the Batman one's Diet Coke, I believe. And then ET, right? ET. Uh, maybe ET. I don't remember. I think ET has one with what is uh, Pepsi on on the corner, on the right corner, but but the cola promotion ones, I feel like, are always good to go after Pepsi and Coca Cola. But the ones that you want to avoid are like the McDonald's promotional stuff, because again, it's like so much later. There's so many of those that people are. I think there's like a um, there's a Wayne's World one. There's an Adams Family one. There's even a Back to the Future one. Like anything that has the freaking McDonald's logo on it, like mass. Stay away from those. Yeah. You don't want it. Even Back to the Future, you don't want it. Like that's not the coffee you want. <laughs> I feel like that's the one that gets people too because they're like, oh, it's Back to the Future and it's some kind of promotion. And I'm like, Those no. Are the ones I am going to collect now, just like the McDonald's ones. Yeah. Well, it'd be like, cool to have the whole set. Doing it because not a, not everyone else is going to hate on No one else does that. And yeah. Like, you could put them well, together, like all just McDonald's. Yeah. Have the whole set of them. There's one more tape there, the Indiana Jones Temple of Doom. I think that's the first release. I want to. I want to. This one? But the Raiders is not. So for the viewers. Right. If this one is the first release of of the second Indiana Jones movie with the back watermark. It says a stereo on the left side on the front. Yep. And that's this one is a good investment. But again, it's not rare, guys. So mm -hmm. don't go crazy on this thing. It's it's definitely plenty of these. And then but the back these ones too. Not, not the first release for sure. Right, right. And it, that's pretty easy to point out with these because anything that says collector's series or collector's edition, you know, you can assume is not the first print. Although I think Danny or, or Mikey said that these, that they're collectors, that they're specifically going for these, the gold on the top. Mm -hmm. Yo, see, that's what I mean about the McDonald's yeah. thing, though. Like, yeah. like, like, you know, like guys get like. Yeah. But yeah. This, don't go overboard. Like you, you cannot pay more than you know. Like you, I don't want to say numbers, but stop like, telling people what to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's just his opinion. What do I do, Pablo? Yeah, you're right. But again, you see, the back watermarks can can trick people. They might right. be the first release, and it is not. Right. Yeah. I mean, I agree. You should definitely buy what you want and what you want to collect, and what you spend on it is your own. Um, decision obviously but if you are buying it like oh i want to own this but you know at one point we'll probably resell it yeah, yeah, just just don't overpay. It. yeah just you know, make educated agree. decisions yeah, right i agree with you david and maya i'm just saying do not overextend yourself like i said i you, feel you Paula. if you like it so i'm gonna pay a thousand dollars for this maybe 1500 i mean that's like okay so what are you buying these confuse me because I was under the impression that all three of these were not rare at all. What um, you think, Dave? I don't know about these. The Star Trek, like I, I don't like Star Trek, but I mean, like I see it all over. Like, yeah, those, like, those are the few that I actually have seen sealed, like our Star Treks and shit. Right. Like, I, honestly, like I feel like I leave them, like when they're a dollar, like sealed. I'm not a fan of the original series. I like the the new generation. Uh, but this this is not for me the uh, the the original one. I love OG Star Trek. George yeah. makes fun of me all the time because he's just like you, he came in today and he's like, "Are you watching Star Trek again?" And I was like, "I love Spock. I can't help it." Like, <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. Have you seen the new generation though? No, I haven't. Is, that, is new generation the one with uh, Patrick Stewart? Yeah, uh, yeah. Please. I've seen a couple episodes of it. Yeah, please go from the beginning and, and give uh, at least. Give a little time, but that that series is pretty strong, Maya. You will see. I mean, again, I uh, if Love you're it. Spock, I mean, he's definitely a amazing character, a amazing actor. 
Um, but yeah, I, I'm a Star Wars fan for sure. See, no, yeah, I've never uh, seen any of the Star Wars. I feel like anytime anyone's like, you want to watch these? I'm like, I have zero interest whatsoever. But I also thought that about Star Trek. And then I just started watching it and it was actually really entertaining. Like, I just love it. Are you a fan of Star Trek or Star Wars, Dave? I don't like either one. <laughs> He's like, no, <laughs> fuck all that. I like either one. I mean, I've seen Star Wars. I've, I've never actually really seen Star Trek. I don't think I've seen new ones like the movies. You, yeah. You've seen the new movies, though, with Chris yeah. Pine? Okay. You haven't seen... Um, you've seen the, the New Generation with Patrick Stewart? No, no. That's a good one, man. Give it a try. Everybody prefers uh, The Next Generation over the original, except for me. I'm like, I just... Which I've seen, like, a couple episodes of it, and Patrick Stewart is cool as fuck, but, like, I guess in my mind, I think of Patrick Stewart, and it just immediately puts me in mind of X-Men, and I'm like, that's the only way I want to know him. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. But anyway, yeah, so this should be interesting. We'll, we'll check back up on this um, in about 34 days and see where this stuff ends. Just, uh, you know, make sure you know what you're bidding on. I wanted to see this one, too. It seems like what a really good grade on that. Thing. Are you familiar with that Voltron tape, Maya or Dave? What, what is that Voltron thing? Is that like, like a cartoon? What? Yeah, it's a it's an eighties cartoon. Is this the watermark that this is supposed to have? No, um, that's not in the right fucking movie. Yeah, Child's what is that? Child's play, child's play. Oh, they it's the wrong it's the wrong picture oh. on the side. Oh, certified link mixed up over there. Yeah, get your shit together, comic link. Certified link, yeah. They they I definitely found uh, Deadly Night, like Silent Night, Deadly Night. They yeah, I wonder if they did it backwards. Oh no. Let's see. It'd be awesome. That happens so often. When oh, I it's the these. garbage uh, pale kids in there. That's a good one, Maya. Yeah, people ask me if I have a copy of that all the time. Now they just put the same picture in the Check wrong the one. Garbage pale kids. I mean, that for for some of the collector, I think that's a that's a good tape to invest. People yeah, love this stuff. Depends which one it is, though. That movie. Oh, this movie is so fucked up. Like this is like the most fucked up movie ever. Like for I mean, because it's for kids and it's like it's so not like it's weird. It's like a. You know, such a messed up movie. Ooh, they're like puppets. You've never <laughs> seen this movie? Oh, no. But now I want to watch it. It's so oh, fucking yeah. bizarre. It's got such weird innuendos and just like horrible, like just adult things that are in it that are like, and this is not for children. Do you know? The know. But it's only rated PG. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like it, you, when you see it, you'll be like, wow, what is this? Oh, yeah. oh, Look at it later it. after we finish, garbage pail kids. The cards are really collectible. Some yeah, of the that's what I was gonna say. Like I've been on a couple different like odds and ends auction websites. Oh, which I you guys could could look into that too. Um, just I, I started looking up auctions in my area, like locally, right? And I found different websites that a lot of local auction places only do online auctions. You know what I mean? And like sometimes you have to pick up the stuff in person, but sometimes they'll ship it to you. So you could be bidding on like stuff in an auction house in fucking Tennessee. And I'm constantly scouring all those weird websites. Like as long as you can find one that's legit, you know, you're not going to put your credit card info in and get robbed, which I've seen quite a few. Sometimes I find tapes that way too. So that's one that I haven't thought of, but. Um, yeah. house, house clean out people I hear too. Like guys I know that do that, like yeah. they, they find it more than anyone else I know in those like fields, like for picking, I mean, as the people that do like, you know, re uh, foreclosures or like just house clean outs completely yeah. for the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be an excellent career to yeah. find stuff like that. But There's a lot of garbage pail kids, cards collectors, believe me guys. So oh, that's what reminded me of it. One of those auction websites that I found, I was watching a bunch of these cards and sticker sets go for sale. And I could not believe what they sold for. Those could not believe it. Those are real. They go for a lot of money, especially that the one with like a vampire one. Um, I don't know. Yeah, like the sets of them, like the booster pack, whatever those are, like the cases. Yeah, the original ones are the ones that go for a lot of money, and, and they're definitely collectible. See, I don't remember the Garbage Pail Kids from when I was a kid, but I do remember that like in my, in my elementary school that all these kids collected and traded. Um, they remind me of these because they were like brand name stuff like Oreos, but they were like Ueos, so they were like green and slimy. Like it was brand name stuff, but they were knockoffs and they were made gross and stuff. And we would put them on our binders, but they remind me of these garbage pail kids because it's like a parody. It's like a gross parody. Um, but I never saw these and everyone's always asking me if I have this movie. 
And I'm like, no, I've never even heard of it. I've never seen it. No, so there's, like, there's two versions of it, though. They look alike. One of them has like that MCA type difference, though, about it. One of them oh, goes really? for, like, like t double, triple the amount as the other one does because oh. it has like a different, you know, like. Is this a VHS or Betamax? This is a Betamax. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, but wow. again, this one, I think this one's going to go for a lot because it's, it's definitely a rare tape to find. See, open, it goes for $40 all day. Mm -hmm. Decent amount for an open tape. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are going to want that one. But think, yeah. Let me ask Dave real quick. Dave, what do you think VHS and Betamax? Do you think it should be even? Like, uh, if you want to collect them, or 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 you think you should stick with VHS? What what do you like? Whatever they like. Like I said before, no, I'm <laughs> for you. I mean, I would say Betamax should actually be the the you know in the first place it should be worth more money it's technically the very first it's also should be rare but because it's such a dead media that no one gave a fuck about there's more of it like stashed you know that can be found or whatever so it's more common i guess than to find sealed than vhs would be you see so that's, it's a catch that's a good point but again i make my counterpoint like my generation dave like i didn't go out with with betamax no one did no well no yeah guys uh, older than me they did Really? No, not really, though, because it was such an expensive technology. From I mean, I didn't grow up in but what I hear of history lessons of it. It's like, there's not too many guys, but believe me, there were collectors of Betamax because they came. It came first, 1976. So they had two years where VHS was not around. VHS came in 78. So two years of only Betamax collectors. So you should respect that. You know, oh. definitely they were there first, but like eventually, again. Um, they lost against VHS, but uh, there's definitely better Max collectors. It's just there are fewer and fewer. Now. I would say it would all depend on what the tape itself is and the rarity of it. Like the, to, in comparison, like you'd have to judge it that way. If mm -hmm. one buys it, yeah. I mean. and I'm asking because again, I see that garbage pail kits, and I said like, well, should I wait for a VHS or I put this on the wall? It's a it's a better Max. But they look pretty much the same. That's also the point that I wanted to make. Like, do you do you get that Betamax tape until you get a VHS? That's the other thing. Like, I think it, it's like VHS with the sealed thing. Like I was saying earlier, how like the scarcity of it to really find certain tapes. Like people get that confused because they see a lot of these fucking '90s ones that you know are just so you know, a plethora of them, and they get it confused that they think all VHS are like that or something. And it's like, it's the polar opposite of that for the right tapes. You know, like all of these cult horror ones are the prime example of that, that like in garbage pail kids, like how many of those you really think are steel, let alone if you, I don't know the name of it. So I don't want to quote it, but it's like KVC or something. It's that edition. It comes mm -hmm. before the Atlanta Paramount ship. So like you find that steel, I've never seen one. Like, I know they upcharge that just if you have it opened even for that version of it. So, like, find a seal VHS of that. Very good, yeah. So you might have to take the Betamax then, you know what I mean, if you right. want. Yeah, I think it's, it's a good point. I mean, ironically, with, with Betamax, the later you get into the years, the more rare. Like, there's a Mission Impossible for 1996. Like, if you find that on VHS, that's a $2 tape. But on Betamax, if you find that seal that's a lot of money Dave. it's just because again betamax was dead by yeah. 1989 so to find a betamax on 1986 is extremely rare yeah yeah that's a good point anything else was, you, Maya? i don't know i was just thinking about i guess you know it depends on the collector because I guess I was just thinking I sell a lot of open tapes and a lot of times people don't want clamshells. They don't like clamshells because they like the uniformity of their, you know, cardboard slip cases. But um, I'm starting to move the other way. Like I'm addicted to those Warner with those Warner clamshells. I love them. And I'm like, I just want the whole set of them. I see pictures of people that have like because through the years, different movies, they did like the same um, cover the same pattern but it was different yeah. colors so they have like a rainbow of Warner clamshells and I'm like I want that <laughs> yeah, you know, I was talking with Dave remember the, the other day and I, I just I'm not a fan of clamshells or big boxes I want to have all sleep cases yeah 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 I, I go back and forth clamshells like most people don't though but like you, should, you just said like it's like that's the beauty of the collecting of it though that like 
you know, it's wormholes or rabbit holes that you spiral down. And like everyone has different opinions of it, but it's all like, thing, it's all you know, pain. Yeah, yeah, like it runs. Yeah, but look, if I see a, a, a clamshell of Necromantic, I'll, I'll take it because that's the original release. Right. Yeah, there's that too. Is that a lot of those, you know, Warner tapes, especially, think- it came out originally as clamshells. And then it's like, but that, I mean, that's a fun factor too. The shine. The, I know we've seen copies of The Shining and stuff that go for a decent price with the wraparounds or the the front watermarks, whatever it is. But the original release was on a clamshell, so it's like some people want the original release clamshell, but other people are just as fine with the slip case because it's like, well, this is the first slip. So, you know, just because it's not the the first release doesn't mean it's worthless. <laughs> so. I do have a couple of tapes to show you guys. I will. I can go over them real quick if you if we have time. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Let me you up top, Pablo. Old school. Will Ferrell. Now this one is sealed, but you want one that has like a watermark by. by um, I'm not sure if this uh, DreamWorks. So this oh, DreamWorks. One, yeah, okay. I probably can still get it graded, but the one that is really valuable, if you, if you find one of these and it says DreamWorks at the bottom with the watermark. Then I have Bloodsport, one of my favorite movies from the 80s. Yeah, Bloodsport. Oh. Yeah. But this one has watermarks on the back, so you, you would like to find one that has watermarks in the front and in the on the back. And Yo, this dude pissed me off in a group once. He he tried to buy blood rage from me, and I sent him that. Like, like, I, you know what I mean? Like, cause fuck that dude, but like, you did, yeah. Like early on in those days, like Planet Horror or whatever. Like he bought a blood rage from me. He pissed me off though. He's such a dick, and like, you know, I was like, fuck this dude. And I sent him that. Oh my god, that's so I'm fucking like, funny. Walking. I can't remember if I even did ship him the real one. Like after, that that's hilarious. All right, another one, and one of my favorite movies, Transporter. This one has Fox watermarks, but this is a common tape, maybe a hundred bucks, eighty bucks. Then I have, oh, it, that thing. but this is not the first release. This is a later release. Has the little infamous reels. The reels. Uh, but this one, guys, no, you're looking for the one with the rainbow. Um, this is uh, you see, like again, though, just to make a side note of it, the, the devil's advocate here, like for all of the people that cannot afford that stereo one that's like fucking stupid money right now, like and it is very rare and probably does deserve that, but like you know, it's a great movie, like not everyone can own the stereo one, right? Arguably the best horror movie uh, of all time. I mean, for me, it's definitely top, top five horror sci fi movies of all time for me. Yeah, again, see, like, I always prefer movies like this. And then there's, like, Christine and They Live. And I'm like, I will take those any day over a slasher. I just will. I, I love them. I love a lot of John Carpenter, too. It's just, oh, that's cool. This is Tomorrow is the birthday of the king. So I wanted to show real quick. Um, I mean, it's a lot of movies with Elvis. Probably Charles or Danny, no more. This is, uh, and um, um, this is, uh, again, it has a little... Blue sticker, which is you, you want this at the bottom, I think, for early for the first release, but on the side, it's still good. So Elvis was the king for sure. I like those boxes, but I hate Elvis. Yes, this one yeah, is- like that, like how people, I you know, people call up those. You yeah, know, like because like, they're all the same kind of. I don't remember what people call those. This is kind of like a big box, right? But it's big box, like- or what? Are, I mean, what do they call gatefolds? I feel like I hear people use these terms of so many different you know, that, things. That's actually kind of like maybe what that is like a gatefold. It's like a bigger version of a gatefold, but that just folds out like and opens like that. Like yeah, it open, opens like a book. Yeah. All right. And the last two guys, um, it's a little weapon, another of my favorite ones. <laughs> Upside down. <laughs> so this one. This one has the 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 wrap around, so you got the front watermarks and the back watermarks. First release. This is definitely the one that you want to find and buy. And if, like Dave says, if you cannot afford it or it's too expensive, you just buy the one with just the front watermarks, which is a later release, but still the same back cover. Still cool, yeah. So for the viewers, 
always like you said that earlier, Maya, wrap around watermarks. So if you see Warner in the crown. Yeah, what year is that movie? This is 87. 87. But, I was going to say, that's got to be like one of the last years that they did those uh, wraparounds, I think. This is probably the last year that they did the wraparound. So any movies from 82 to 87, you definitely want to find with front and back watermarks. Yeah. As best buy, but the second best buy would definitely be front watermarks uh, and the same back cover. Mm -hmm. So you can have like a barcode. You don't want to see a barcode in the on the back cover because that means 90s. Correct. For sure. So you want to stick with uh, with that. And that's good, guys. Cool, 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 cool. I got some cool stuff too. I'll show you guys. Actually, most of these, the ones that I have in the room are just stuff that Nico got me for Christmas. Um, this one was particularly funny. Maya. What? No, that they maybe show us something after you, Maya. But oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. For you. So oh, I finally got my Fight Club. Oh, I hate you. I love, I love it. Um, funny enough, though, he gave me this with it because he knows I don't like the VHS DNA. So he snapped it out of the case. Oh, Before he should have done a video of smashing that thing to the ground. Before he gave it to me, I'm like, oh, it makes it better that you like smash it out of that awful case before he gave it to That's me. That's a great gift. Oh, yeah. I, love I think it. that's the one we broke, dude. What? Like, like the VHS DNA. Oh, you should you oh, should yeah. send that to, my, to right. Duke, uh, Dave. Send, send Duke that video that you destroyed that tape. Yeah, jaw, that's why I was just asking him like what it was. It was Jawbreaker. So Beverly Hills Cop. Whoa, that's Betamax, right? Yep, beta. Nice. Beta, beta. You. I think it does have the drill hole of death, though. The burgundy hates. What does that mean? Do you know what that means, Dave? That drill hole? No, I'm not up with all the slang, like lingo with the sealed stuff. Yeah. This is literally, they took a drill to it and put a drill in it. So many of them have it. I don't know why. Um, and then this one's pretty cool. I just like the, it's cat's eyes, but I like the, uh, the big key watermarks on the back of it. Super cool. What's the name of the movie? Cat's eye. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. I love those key video ones. Those are super cool. The watermarks are just looking. Okay. Look at these boxes you put them into. They're like perfect VHS size. Nice. <laughs> like, I'm just going to keep them in here so they don't get damaged. But, um, you you should send, you're going to send it to Beckett or IGS. Oh, Bride of Frankenstein. I don't know yet. I got so many tapes that I need to send. Um, it's got the side watermarks, but still, I just, again, I, I love Frankenstein. So this one was just a me maybe you do then, your new cosplay as the bride of frankenstein yeah i would love that reanimator it has the correct watermarks but as you can see it needs a little bit of work done to it because it is loose it's pretty loose it's common with restaurants i've found a, that's a rated version right not the unrated um let's see this is the blue version so i think this is the rated oh no this is the unrated so the blue one is unrated and the the black one or is it yeah black one is the rated, rated. version yeah, you, Which, a lot of those Vestrons do that because I know um, Slaughter High, I think, does it too. Yeah, unrated is better. It's better than rated. Right. If you've got the more gory parts. Um, if you <coughs> always get the unrated, I know Mutilator is there too. Mutilator and uh, yeah, that one I need to show. This one's probably my favorite. Well, again, like maybe not the most valuable tape in the world, but I talk about it all the time that when I was a kid, I remember having this. Um, I loved this tape. Name it before Christmas. And, um, yeah, I, I loved it. And my brother put my copy on a radiator and melted it because he was so sick of watching it. So this is the demo tape and it's sealed. I already had an open one, but he got me a sealed one. And I'm like, I've never might not seen be like that. I love it. I love well, it. Right says that that's a rare tape. Yeah, that's fucking cool. I, I mean, they go for like okay. one, two hundred bucks depending on condition open. So I feel like getting it sealed has got to be pretty rare. And then he also got me this, which I was like, mm -hmm, I see where this is going, like right into the next hobby. But uh, it's the For Your Consideration Little Miss Sunshine DVD. And that's sealed? Yeah, it's sealed. Do they have watermarks on the DVDs? I don't see any watermarks on it. I mean, to be honest, like, it's cool. It's super cool. But I don't think I'll ever collect DVDs. It's not my thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't think DVDs are going to be become valuable. What do you think, Dave? Do you think DVDs are going to be valuable? Yeah. Anyone's guess? <laughs> Just you yelling at No, like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't like, I don't like the idea of it. 
do you have any other collectibles that you think they're gonna be uh, uh in the spotlight dave do you think obviously you paperbacks duh do you have anything there to show us real quick yeah uh like so quick market pitch right like <laughs> real quick, just jump in like that Chip, bro, let's see what is, what is the next hobby what is the thing that he's gonna the next do? best hobby is to spin off uh all of the paper products that formed this collectible market and hobby and that coincide so things like this that also be a test yeah and off the off the EHS too because what I didn't bring really is all of the movie tie-ins though like there's thousands of them I mean for every one, every VHS you know there's one of these that's a paper product look at my face open look show that again show that and cover again. oh like, man I love that they show look my like this. Awesome, man Look at that cover. Oh, this one's a rare yeah. one. This one's called Down on the Farm. This is like, like a few hundred dollars probably for this book. And it's oh, just man. very rare. And the reason I think it's such a potential is because for grade purpose it, down the line per se, but it's paper. So you have different brackets to it and people can afford lesser ones and, you know, higher grade ones. And you can still collect them. You can still find them out there in the wild. So it's fun for people. And you know, guys have collections. People have book collections of them. They're just looked at the way comics were 15 years ago, like it's fucking junk. But it it has this huge underground market for it, just like VHS does. And it's just not in the mainstream yet like that. I mean, well, so now I hate you. 12. Oh, look at that. So that would be like the Punch <laughs> Comic 12 of, you know, paperbacks right there, because it is. It's already known like oh, that dude. within that world. Of, I'm going to have a new problem now. I hate you. Want, you. Yo, my, you want a real problem? Because you grew up with these probably too. So like the smutty fucking trash that we all grew up on, that's like the fear streets. Oh, and my God. Comics. And, you know, so they're, they're just designed, they're cleverly worded murder porn for children that children yes murder, but you know but <laughs> everyone loves it they, like i remember we all had it so what i was telling cleverly you, worded right? murder porns i'm yeah, gonna disguised. coin that i love that yeah. it's just disguised as you know children's books they're for literally they say they're for eight-year-olds like this is not for an eight-year-old this person got stabbed this girl it's like this child and like this is the, they're, they're kids and she's gonna kill this little boy or something so like, they're, they're, but that's why they're, they're, people love them. That's why I love them. That's why everyone remembers Goosebumps too. So, you know, the thing I was telling Pablo earlier, why I think it's the number one up and comer is because the way comic books used to be for dealers that you could go find collections, right? And you could hustle this and then you could make money on it. Everyone collected. It was fun, right? Think 20 years from now and my generation and the ones before it and after all grew up on these you know, uh, young adult horror books and, you know, Goosebumps, Fear Street, Terror Academy, Nightmare Hall, all of these things like that. 20 years from now, like there will be collections of it because there already are. I'm a perfect example. I've stumbled into this shit fucking a year ago off VHS and I have fucking archives of it already because that's the addiction and personality of every one of us here that and everyone watching this. That's why I'm telling you guys, like, that's why it's the number one up and oh, come man. and I'm because you can still start. find it and like 20 years from now what's to say that you couldn't go out and be like oh i could buy this collection of paperbacks you know like that and resell and flip and make money on whatever and buy you know who and like pablo asked questions all the time to me about like you know intricacies of it of like like print run and shit like that the thing with the at least all right so real quick these books like paperbacks from hell they make an entire encyclopedia you can buy that's just designed to these that's how big the following already is on it and these are not the same as like books like this that are just smutty kids books from the 90s and 80s these are mass produced they, they have millions of them they're sold at book fair scholastic elementary schools worldwide or nationwide at least and the thing is there's millions of them but here's the catch are they first prints or how high grade are they? Uh, how many people fucking read these? Because I, I know I read them. I know every one of my friends did as kids. And so they're going to be beat up. So find nine eights or nine nines of these things and then tell me they're not worth money and they don't have a fan base or like a demand that follows these kind of things. So that's my pitch. So the, there's a lot of VHS. Like, for example, you can find paperbacks of Halloween. You can find paperbacks of the job. Adventures in babysitting. Uh, anyone you name. It, 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 except sleepaway camp i don't know why child's play one doesn't have one but two and three have them but no one 
Texas Chainsaw doesn't have one, but like Friday the 13th, uh, all the rest, not just horror, like every movie, and they still make them to this day somehow. Wow, like, that's awesome. New yeah. movies can make them. Also a copy of, uh, I know there's a copy of uh, The Thing, but it doesn't yeah. have this cover. It doesn't have No, no, it doesn't have that cover. It has a si similar cover, but there's also like four different versions of it, as well as British and American copies, and, you know, there's intricacies to it. But that's the beauty of it. See them up there. Definitely, I now you have to add paperbacks to your search. Can you see those up there? I got my Animaniacs comic right next to my graded uh, tape Anima. of it. Yo, that's exactly what so I'm I like. Feel like. You'd have to get the kids' books of it too. Right, like I want the whole set now. Like I've started. Exactly. Pablo, like you always see the diversified the... portfolios for future collectors. That's what she just said right there. See. Right. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I'm like more into the um, instead of. I need like 5,000 comic books. I'm like, I really love this one thing I'm into and I want to have it in every single format there is. Like, there you go. That, yeah. I mean, I'm like that with so many movies. I'm like, I want it on DVD. I want the poster of it. I want the VHS. Like, I want the action figures. Like, I just, I want it all. So, you know, instead of collecting a ton of one thing, that's how I am. I was just going to say too, in one of those abandoned houses me and my brother were in, I found a paperback book of the Universal Monsters and was like, my, and took it because it's so cool looking. Like, collect all the frankenstein stuff so man you just give me a new problem <laughs> yeah sorry about that <laughs> do you have a couple of more days like two or more horror ones those, those horror covers are incredible man they're so cool so have these things that are called all right these are a publisher that's known as zebra and in like in anything it would be like like vhs releases have like a vestron right so oh, like shit look at that cover but now these are kind of like a cult thing within the paperback following of collectors because the zebra books all look like these kind of books. They're, they're awesome skeleton covers. They're like graphic and there's hundreds of different ones and oh, different awesome. authors and different titles. And I've never read one, but like I'm assuming they're wonderful, you know, literature. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. Whoa. Damn. So, yeah, and th I mean, there, there's thousands of them, though. Like literally thousands and thousands, it'll never end. And then there's thousands of rabbit holes and loopholes within that. But let me ask you real quick, like for paperbacks, is it like with VHS that we stick to the 80s and paperbacks should stick with the no, 60s? You can collect what you want. No, I know. I No, no, I mean like like in the, I don't mean to be a dick even like now with that. I mean, it's like more like. I have you know, to, this back and forth you guys do though, no. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to rephrase Dave because what I mean is, yeah, collect what you want, but are the paperbacks the golden era? Like, what, yeah, what, which what? ones are the most valuable? That's what he's asking you. What era? Of course, that's what he's asking you, fucking <laughs> vampire. Like, that's uh, I mean, all right. So, like, within anything, like, so, so like, pre, like Pablo will know, like, you'll know my like pre code horror collecting every book, like Chamber of Chills, that has like one or two issues in it that are the standout classic, you know, that define that series of books. That's kind of how this is, like, where. You know, you're going to get certain ones that are just more well known. Like this one is more well known out of a thousand plus that look like it and are like it from all these eras that come out. So it's not necessarily like it has to be older for it to be worth money. It just has to be fucking cool. And that's why I liked it because it doesn't follow those guidelines that these other collectible realms do. I like that too. Because right I'm like really new to this. I mean, I've always collected shit, but like the VHS is really the first thing that I've ever collected that I'm like, Oh, um, these ones are more valuable than these ones. Like I never paid attention to that shit when I collected before because as as everyone else likes to joke about being a trash panda, I collected junk, which is where the junk store baby name comes because all the stuff I collected, people were like, that's junk. So <laughs> until tapes, other people actually care about tapes. So. But they didn't though. Like two, three years ago, right. I mean, the group, guy, the group guys, the people that think you guys are the worst, like those people, like they, they did though, because right. you know, that's why they think you guys are the worst because you invaded them like that and then just took it over real quick and made it mainstream like that. And then, but they've been doing this forever and it's always been just junk to them. It's been like a secret, right? Like hidden, yeah. you know, to them. And now that it's more mainstream, like that, that I think that's the biggest. Right. I get their frustration with that too. Sometimes, you know, I've had hobbies that become that way, like they get exploited, but uh, and then they turn into big mainstream thing. But I'm like, at the end of the day, like if you try to gatekeep everything you like, you're just gonna be miserable. So I'm like, whatever, yeah, more exactly. the merrier, I guess. Like if yeah, you price me out of my on. hobby, I'll just find something else. Like whatever, I guess you can't <laughs> stop it. Dude, yeah, that's where you start pushing paperbacks. Yeah, that happened with with comics, though, guys. Uh, 
we, CGC came in the year 2000. And believe me, Maya, what you see on Facebook by the OG VHS guys, that happened with the comic book guys in 2000. When yeah. CGC came out, I said, what the hell is this? Why, why are you putting a comic book inside a, a tomb case? Right. Like, they, they, they Which have, I like that. I like the graded comics have a super good look. And I just now started collecting them. And there's there's obviously stuff that I'm never going to be able to afford. But I have an entire collection so far of like stuff that is is worthless to anybody else. But I love it. So I'm like, whatever. I mean, yeah. the VHS is the same way. That's why I don't get those guys as anger. Because I'm just like, I can get I have so many second prints of stuff in my personal collection that's open because I don't care. I just want to watch it. You know what I mean? Like. My whole open collection is is probably only worth a couple hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Maybe minus like the wizard, you know, the big one, the one big one. Like, so I'm like, who cares? Yeah, but people enjoy their fun. They definitely have a point about like people trying to to make money. You know, the the speculators and the investors. I I, I definitely understand. You know, but again, it, that's what a market. It is uh, comprised for. Like, oh, for sure. And that's what I'm doing. Don't get me wrong at all. Like, I'm an open collector, but don't think for a minute that I'm not trying to make money off of the hobby that I love because I absolutely am. Like, my collection, basically all open. But the sealed stuff, I love to play that. If I can find a sealed tape at a Goodwill store for $2 and then turn around and sell it to somebody who's like, oh, my God, this is so rare and I love this movie and I'm going to spend five grand for it, I'll do that all day long. Like, And who wouldn't? Uh, right, exactly. Who wouldn't? Like, unless you're just independently wealthy, which I am not. Um, I'm a poor person from West Virginia. <laughs> I would do this all day, every day. Like, like, oh, go get a real job. I'm like, no, I would. I, I will enjoy doing this. This is fun. I love it. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I guess if you hate people for that, I will own it. And you can hate me for it, but I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, guys, the lesson that I learned earlier with comics, and I'm going to apply it to VHS, is... The value of something is something, the value of something is what someone is willing to pay for it. So, right. if you think this is worth fifty bucks, it's, it's worth fifty bucks to you. If you think it's five hundred, it's five hundred. If you think it's five thousand, it's five thousand. It's whatever you're willing to pay for it. You got to right. remember too. On a closing note, the VHS market for this shit is very, very in its infancy. Okay, it's very brand new. So, like, there's no rules yet or guidelines that are set per se. So, like, you don't know what the rules are. That's also the gift and a curse of it and why it's also fun or you know not fun to certain people depending on right. perspective but you know yeah 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 i feel like i mean i definitely feel like i'm on both sides of it i mean i do this show and i definitely watch all the auctions and i try to buy stuff and spec it out about what's going to be worth more in the future but um like i mean me and danny talk about most all, mostly all of my personal collection with a few exceptions like the animaniacs and are all open tapes um you know what i mean so it's like I don't own any I don't, I, I don't get the I don't get the hate for it at all. I feel like it'll pass. People either get on board or they or they'll just keep collecting open stuff and I mean good for them. Good for that, you know. Because like Pablo said with comics though, because I saw some of that, like from the guys that trained me in it when I first got into comics, that like these are like the ghosts of comic dealer past, like that they were so CGC, it's unreal. It's like they were like, that's the death of this industry. Like the day that the last comic goes in a slab is the day comic books die. And I I know guys specifically that were like, I'm fucking done with it. I will not do this. I will not compromise my own beliefs and follow these trends. And literally, like seven years later, they had a whole wall of CGC books. Right. So, yeah. And like, you know, a lot of these people too were all shitty, like, oh, you're just trying to make money off of this. And I'm like, that is true. But if I can make a profit on a sealed tape for someone who has the money to be blowing on that kind of thing, and it gives me the opportunity to give somebody a deal on an open tape, because of course I do my, you know, whatnot show and I sell like all kinds of tapes starting at a buck, doesn't matter how rare the horror is. So I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, are you guys selling your super rare horror tapes starting at a buck and letting people? Because I, I know I sold like a really nice copy of Sleepaway Camp for like 65 bucks one time because that's all it went for. Like the market will decide and somebody got a really good deal on it. And I'm like, are you doing that? Like you're criticizing me for selling an open tape that you have no interest in. But are you giving other people deals on the open tapes you claim to love? No, you're not. So it's like, you know, you can pick at people all day, but it, I don't know. I just try to. Sometimes they get to me, but. No, I wouldn't let them get you because they all do it. They're, they're, that's the part I learned early. Like right. they just front like that on those groups, like the safe yeah. fix, quote unquote, face for themselves amongst their group buddies. But all those dudes are the same dudes that sold me their sealed tapes early on and like right. you know, all this. So, like, Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Hot cutting kettle black there. 
Anyway, I guess I better, I'll roll our outro here. We went way over the top. Pablo's like, we'll do like 30, 45 minutes. And here we are, like an hour 20. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> all right, guys. I uh, thank you. And uh, I hope to see you all on again. With that, we are out. Thank you.